Hello and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In today's episode, we're going to have a look at mechanical methods of removing mill scale. Stay tuned. I hate mill scale. There's just no getting around it. It's on any of these hot rolled pieces of tube, flat plate and other things that you get that you're going to use for your projects. And it needs to be removed prior to painting, prior to welding, prior to all kinds of processes. Now, mill scale is diabolical. It's like 100% contacted with the steel. It's sort of bonded in there. And all it is is iron oxides and other stuff that's floated to the surface during the processing of the steel. So it's, it's not part of the steel though. Don't leave it on there. We don't have time to sandblast everything. We don't have every method in the world. Right, so in this video, we're going to have a look at a number of abrasive methods. So mechanical methods of just removing the mill scale. Now I know mill scale comes in different qualities of mill scale. We're gonna have a look at some of those examples too. And we're gonna see what works best. Now, just like, Just like everything on the channel, uh, I paid for all of this. No one's giving me any money for any of these things. But I'll make a little bit, I'll make a dollar off of the YouTube ad revenue. Why am I mentioning this? Because I get annoyed with influencers who are busy on YouTube trying to sell you stuff. I'm not a shill, I'm here to try to help, right? So let's quickly review what products are gonna be in the Throttle Stop Garage Shootout. Okay, first up. Uh, this is a Norton Blaze, so I wandered into my local welding store day before yesterday, actually, and I said, hey, what do you guys use for getting rid of mill scale? Because I just hate having to deal with mill scale. And the guy said, wow, these work great. So I'm like, okay, give me a couple of those, $15 a piece. Right, so I bought a few of those. I also have the purple ones, right? These are from Makita. I think 3M probably makes these because I have other 3M that's about the same. It's actually a little bit more dense than the orange blaze, which is listed as being extra coarse. Then I've got a couple of different fancy flap wheels. These aren't just regular flap wheels. These are expensive ones. Uh, so these are Walter Abrasive Technologies are making these things. This one's an aluminum oxide. Not expecting this to work very well. This one is a zirconium. All right, so we'll see if that works. And I'm not a huge fan of flap discs because they tend to float on the mill scale and they'll gouge into the steel. And that's always bad. Things we won't be testing. We won't be testing regular old quarter inch grinding discs, right? We know those don't work. Uh, we also won't be testing surface conditioning discs because they're not meant to do this job either. They're meant for finishing after the fact. So we won't be testing either of those methods. But everything else is on is on the table. The final one, which we're going to test, uh, and I just discovered this the other day, is from Walter, and it's these flex cut things. And I love these, generally. And this one specifically says right on it, mill scale. <laughs> okay, so promises, promises. Let's see if we can get those promises kept. Now, the different varieties of mill scale that we're going to test. So I have three different pieces of tube. I have some one-inch tube that I would say has very light mill scale. Now I've already washed all of these down with, uh, with Varsol to get rid of any of the oils that are on the surface because we don't want the oils plugging the pad. We want to test the mill scale and our ability to get rid of that stuff. So we've got really light mill scale. Uh, this two by three box section here is slightly, I would call it slightly heavier mill scale, right? So the surface is still reasonably smooth and you can almost see little flecks of steel through the mill scale. You can, the other one, again, that one inch is really, really very thin. Heavier mill scale than that. So I just went through my steel pile and found what I could find. So this is a little heavier than the two by three. Three sixteenths or four mil plate. Uh, and it's got heavy mill scale. There's, you can't see any visible steel through it. It has been plasma cut. I do need to prepare it prior to gluing it uh, for another project coming up next episode. But you can almost see, again, I've cleaned it. So it's shiny, it's not leaving marks on my hand. All that we have here is the mill scale. All right, so that's gonna be the test. We're gonna test these things here. We're gonna use one grinder for the entire test. It is my old five inch Makita. This is the fancy version with variable speed. Um, 
but it's a five inch grinder. It's not a four and a half. So it's got a fair bit more torque than the four and a half inch grinders. It, uh, I've never needed to service this grinder in its life. This is a fantastic grinder. Okay. So those are the tools we're going to use. So let's get after it and just see how this stuff works. Let's try to give you a close up look here. So that is the flex cut mill scale disc from Walter. This is the blaze from Norton, the rapid strip. This is also extra coarse. Then there's the Makita four and a half inch, one of two four and a half inch discs in the test. All right, it's also an extra coarse. Those do work really well for stripping rust and for stripping paint. Okay, the Enduroflex, so that's another product again from Walter. And it's an aluminum oxide abrasive. And then finally, this all steel also from Walter. This one was $13. All right, and that is a zirconium. So we'll see how that operates. Not that bad for mill scale, just a little bit worse. Really not all that great. And the other stuff is nasty, heavy mill scale. Okay, so we're going to give that a pass. That worked really well with hardly any mill scale at all. No surprise. Light mill scale, only where the mill scale got a little heavy over at that edge would I have to get in there and work that a bit harder. But that's quite acceptable. The heavier stuff on this, it peeled it off, so that's also fine. But on the really heavy mill scale on the plate, all I have here is polished mill scale. It didn't take it off at all. Little bits right here at the edge. And other than that, I'd be there all day just making heat. So, oh, you can even see it on the disc itself. All right, so we've got, again, I'm not gonna do this for an hour for you. It doesn't produce a different result. So here you can see the effect, right? We've got loading of the mill scale into the pores of the disc and it's not able to uh, shed those in order to reveal a new cutting surface. So it's quite, it's even shiny right at the edge. Okay, so we'll go okay for tube, not okay for the heavy stuff. On with the Makita. I mean, other than it being a four and a half inch disc, it also has less material, less of the abrasive material into the middle. Okay, so this is just enough to get the nut in. This is way more. So this is gonna last quite a bit longer when you're doing things like stripping paint or rust. All right, let's suit back up and go again. Okay, same exact result as last time for the same reason. So medium mill scale, again, only where it's heaviest on the edge if we have it still remaining. The sort of lighter of the tubes, fine. The one that's almost, the tube with almost no mill scale on it to start with, uh, cleaned up great, no problem at all. You can see we've got the edge loading there with the mill scale from the test. It was starting to bite into the surface. That's good to see, right, right here. So it wasn't just at the edge, but it was biting into the surface here. But I can tell just from starting to do it that that is gonna take forever to do. Next, this is aluminum oxide on this disc. Again, it's a four and a half inch disc just because I didn't have a five inch disc in my collection of discs. These are particularly good abrasives. Um, if you haven't used stuff from, again, I'm not getting paid for any of this, but if you haven't used stuff from Walter before or any of the bigger name brands, like stay away from the junk. It doesn't save you money. It just costs you time.
Okay, that wasn't all that good at all. This, by the way, is a 40 grit wheel. So that's getting after it a little bit. It was even struggling. That's it there. It was struggling even on the tube. You can see here, again, it's just bit in. There's hardly any mill scale at that edge and that flap disc bit into the side and starts rounding that tube over, which is definitely a no, no. Don't want that in here on the top. It's actually not removing that mill scale very well at all. And it's polishing the surface. Uh, on the heavier mill scale, I did run it a little longer so I could get through it, but there is still some polished mill scale remaining. So not great on this, this one here, the two by three, which is a lighter mill scale. Anyways, again, it's not even getting close here at the corner uh, to breaking through this. And this was going to take forever. And on the heavier mill scale, it's once again, just polish is just riding over the surface, not cutting into that surface at all. Another one, save it for grinding steel. Now I've never used this kind of wheel before. I just found it at my welding store, but this is a zirconia wheel, which I like for grinding stainless and other things. Let's see how it works. This again is a 40 grit, so the same grit as the aluminum oxide. A radically different result when the mill scale is lighter. I don't know why I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. That was, that was the result. You can see it's abraded that surface just beautifully. Now you have to be super careful. I was being careful with it. I know it'll bite. See, it bit the edge right there. Right, bit the edge, rounded it over. Tough as, tough as nails though. It felt really easy going through this heavier mill scale on this inch and a half. And on the two by three, butter, totally butter. Went through that nice and easy. And then when we shifted to the 3 16 plate, once again, got problems. It just can't bite through this stuff. Okay, and then finally, last in the test, is this thing that says it's for mill scale. Let's give it a whirl. All right, that's a little bit more rugged. This blade is not, it's not perfectly balanced. Uh, I could tell just when I was using it that it was contacting in one spot only. So it's doing a lot of jumping around. So on the lightweight stuff, yeah, that's not acceptable actually. That's ripping the steel. So that's, if you're making a chassis part, that's ruined. Same story for this. Same story for this tube as well, right? Just ripping the tube. On the flat plate though, where the mill scale is heavier, it is taking that off. It is leaving rather a lot of gouge. The reason they work so well is that they actually are fracturing. So instead of loading with material, they are fracturing as they go. So they're shedding material and they're not clogging. So I've used them on aluminum, I've used them on stainless, I've used them on all kinds of things, and they're just, they're expensive. They're eight or $10 a disc. Um, but in my view, they're worth it. Okay, so I'm gonna just finish off the plate here and then see how this all works out. Right, so we're done that was my bad i a little bit of the plastic on this uh attached nut was uh caught here and and making the the wheel obviously not flat i then 
took it off, put it back on, oh, mistakes happen. And now it's spinning around, but of course I'll have to wear it down to that point, whatever. Okay, so that left a lot rougher finish than I was hoping for. Um, it's a 36 grit disc, so it's gonna, it's gonna do that, but half of the bad finish is me. So let's not blame that on, uh, on Walter for this one. But anyway, that's what you can expect. Um, it never once clogged. It peels through this stuff like butter. In fact, you have to be quite careful. So that's with the heavier mill scale. I have no doubt that this is going to be effective. Uh, this is also completely unacceptable for a surface finish if you were doing it for lots of other reasons. So we're going to come back in and surface prep this again just to smooth this out, see how it looks. In conclusion, what can we say? Um, this particular zirconium uh, disc, I'd give that, that's all right. The uh, oxide, the aluminum oxide disc, I'd use it for grinding. I wouldn't use it for this at all. For either of these sort of open coat discs, um, both left very similar surface finishes and both are really nice. I had literally no problem with those surface finishes at all. They look really good. They're good for tube where Again, that was the first one. This is the second one. That's the purple one here. This is the orange one. The orange, so this is the blaze, probably left the better surface finish overall, in my opinion. Um, both are really easy to use, a little bit longer life out of that one, just because there's more material on it and it's five inch. I've not actually seen the Makita brand in a five, but I'm sure they make one. Anyway, so these uh, products are really good for lighter mill scale on tube. They work great. Um, they're expensive, but they work and they're not gonna damage the tube, which is great. This disc, you have to be quite careful with it. It can damage the tube as can the other flap disc. Uh, I didn't test a regular quarter inch grinding wheel because I know they are gonna clog on this. Again, these flex discs are fracturing. You can see it here all on the edge. It's now almost worn smooth, but it's just breaking itself off. Um, and the difference between the mill scale disc and the regular grinding disc is that the mill scale disc is a little thicker. Okay, so just a bit thicker, so it's giving you longer life. Again, also not going to last forever, but I need to get mill scale off parts. I don't really care about, I just need it to work. I need less frustration in my garage and in my life. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy up the surface finish here. We'll see how that works out. So don't forget to tighten that one down hard. Okay, so for the surface finish, again, back to the welding store. Instead of going to the box stores, I went to the welding store and I asked them what the pros use. And this is what the pros use. So it's an 80 grit. This is a Cool Cut XX 80 grit. Let's see how it performs cleaning this surface finish up. Okay, so after all that work, just just bleeding off the very, very edge of that disc. Uh, and it's still super sharp on the inside. I'm actually really happy with the performance. Apparently you can even get a different backing pad that even improves that a little bit. That worked great, so much better than the other junk I've had in the past. Um, in fact, that would work really well for cleaning the rest of this tube. This is now silky smooth, still hot actually. Apprentice marks were the imbalanced wheel. My fault was digging in. Not a problem for this particular part, but in terms of process, this took, well, what does the clock say? Uh, start to finish, 15 minutes, maybe a little less to fully prep that part. Uh, I'm gonna give that a big thumbs up because that's the kind of time I wanna spend on this. I don't wanna be spending hours dipping things in acids and other stuff that just drives me crazy. Oh, hot with all the safety gear on. Okay, so that's the finished part that was causing the problems with all the mill scale. Right now, no mill scale. Uh, decent surface finish, the gouge is nothing. That was my fault again, no big problem there. So to recap, if you buy these Walter Flex Cut mill scale discs, yeah, that's throttle stop garage recommended. That works for heavy mill scale on plate. Don't use it on anything else. Too much. On the other stuff, any of these woven, again, I'm not 
There's no brand sponsorship here. So there's a Makita, there's a Norton. Uh, I normally actually use a 3M for the purple. It works great on tube where the mill scale is light. Uh, so that works just fine. In fact, it leaves a great finish and it pulls that mill scale off. It will load a little bit. You can, you know, your results, your results might vary. Uh, let's leave the flap discs alone for now. I didn't find, I mean, again, I find the zirconium one. Um, I could use that for grinding all day long. That's going to be a good disc for that. But on any of this mill scale stuff, it does tend to bite the steel. It bites the steel really hard and it doesn't hit the mill scale as hard. So the grinding is inconsistent. So that's not going to be a great thing. And aluminum oxide, it has its place, but not when the mill scale is heavily. It just loads up and then it's a problem. Uh, so if you're in your garage and you're like me and you get trapped in the garbage of mill scale, then you've got to get rid of it. How? I've got a million different ways to abrade steel in my shop from belt grinders to everything else. And I struggle with it all the time. But I think I've found just through taking the time to learn, you know, different processes, different strokes for different kinds of mill scale. And some work a whole lot better than others. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. That's the end. Like, subscribe, make the algorithm happy, folks. Uh, don't forget, catch you on the next episode. Keep your stick on the ice.